Welcome back, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This is our second video on uh, Castellano's second theorem. And this video we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you a little bit of a trick that you can use, maybe something that's going to come up on your exam that you can utilize for your assignments. And um, it involves a cantilever beam where uh, we're asked to find the slope and the deflection at point B, which is the end of the cantilever over here. So in this question, we're given E, we're given I, the I of the entire beam is constant, so that's good. Um, this is another units where we're using uh, imperial units, so we're using inches and, and kips. So what I've done here in the blue, let's go ahead and get started. I've, um, I've given you the formula for the deflection and the slope. In the last question, we just did the deflection. This question, we're going to do the deflection and the slope kind of in one step almost. Um, when we find the value for m. And I, I just showed you guys actually where these formulas come from. So these down here are the formulas that we use. So we have partial m by partial p over m over ei and partial m by partial m bar for slope. But this is where they were derived from. Essentially, it, um, they, they derive an equation. They substitute the, uh, the expression for the strain energy into the formula. You know, um, we don't go too far into derivatives here, but uh, it, just to you know, take a look here. This is where that came from. All right, let's move down here and let's redraw the beam. Okay, and we're going to apply. And if if you haven't, um, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm going to skip a few of the intro steps. Uh, I'll leave a link in the in the description and down below in the comments. So just uh, go back to the first video where we explain about the fictitious loads. Okay, so we have our uh, beam here. I'm going to redraw that. Okay, we have our distributed load. Okay, that's two kip per feet. This is still A and B. And if we look at the question, the question is asking us to find the slope and deflection at point B. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to apply our fictitious loads to the point. Okay, and if you'll remember, the fictitious load, um, it is fictitious because there is no point load or a point moment acting at B. Um, if there was a load or there was a moment, it wouldn't be fictitious. We would assign our, our P and our m bar that value. But because there is no load at, directly at b, they're going to be fictitious. We're going to give, equal them to 0. And we're going to do them both at the same time. So we're not going to do the slope, apply the point load, and then write it out, and then do m. We're going to apply both m bar and p to that point, and we're going to make the moment expression in 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to let's apply our p first, okay? and we're, that's equal to 0. And then we're going to apply our m. Okay and or, or m bar m bar is also equal to zero okay so those are applied at point b and now we're ready to continue so if you remember in the last question what we did our next step was to find the reactions of the beam in terms of p and uh, in this case it would be also in terms of m but um, there's one little trick that we can do that's going to save us a lot of time and I'm always telling you guys in questions regarding origins, like virtual work and Castellano's method, um, that we need to assign ourselves an origin, and then we need to cut the beam on the other side. And what we can do in this question is if we assign the origin to B, and we cut just before A, we don't need to find the reactions at, at this fixed support A. We can just take the moment there, and we can get the expression for AB, uh, in ter the, the M expression, the moment expression, um, for the entire section and we can skip finding the reactions. So, you know, if you were to start as from A as your origin and cut this way, you'd need to find the reactions. So you can always um, kind of save a little bit of time in these questions if you assign your origin correctly. So let's assign our origin as B. Okay, so this is B. We have a moment here, M bar. We have our P point load there, okay? Remember, this is our origin here, so this is our X. And we have our 2x, okay, so our variable load. And we cut the beam here, so we have a moment in this direction. And let's go ahead and find the expression for this moment here. So we have the sum of the moments where counterclockwise is positive. This is a negative moment here, so we're going to give that negative m. All right, we have 2x. 2x acts in the center of the, uh, always, of the variable distance. So that's going to be, and that is in the... Uh, negative direction. So we have negative 2x times x over 2. And we have this p here, which is in the negative direction. That's multiplied by x because at the end. And we have this free moment m bar that is just sitting there. Uh, we don't multiply by any distance when we do a free moment. Remember that. We're just going to go ahead and solve for m here. So m is equal to negative x squared 
minus px minus m bar. That is our expression for our m, and as you can see, if we go ahead and take a look at the equation for slope and deflection, they both share the same m term here. These are both the same. So the only thing that changes between slope and deflection is the partial derivative. One partial derivative, we're taking the partial derivative of this expression with respect to p. The other one, we're taking this expression with respect to m bar. So let's go ahead and solve for those now. And we're not going to draw a table in this one. Um, even though I told you kind of to draw a table, when it's this simple, just plug it into the formulas, OK? So if we take partial m, let's start with partial m by partial m bar. Okay, so that's going to be simply the partial derivative of m with respect to m bar. And so these are both constants, and that is just going to be negative 1, okay, because negative m bar, that's our variable derivative of, for example, x is just 1. And we have our partial m by partial p, okay, so this with respect to p, and that uh, we treat x as a constant here, it's simply going to reduce to x, negative x. Cool, so we have our partial derivatives here. We have our expression for m. And now we're ready to go ahead and start to solve for the deflection and for the uh, slope. So if we go ahead and we only have one span here for our beam, so we're only going to have one term. Let's do the deflection first. So our deflection is going to be from 0 to 30. Remember, our origin was b, so 0 to 30. This is 30 feet here. Let's move 1 over ei to the outside of the uh, integral. So we can, you know, be nice and uh, nice and neat here. And we have our partial m by partial p, okay? So that's negative x, okay? And what else do we have? So we have partial m by partial p. And then the next term is m. So m here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in our values for p and m bar. Um, they're both 0 in this case. If they weren't, we'd need to plug in the values. But so p, this becomes 0. Uh, this whole term becomes 0. This whole term becomes 0. And we're left with negative x squared. Cool. So that's a pretty actually very simple expression. That's just going to leave us with x cubed. Okay, and uh, we can go ahead and evaluate that integral, the definite integral. Learn how to put that into your calculator using the uh, definite integral symbol. You're going to save yourself a lot of time on the midterm. A lot less mistakes too. So um, go ahead and integrate this on your own. Okay, you should get, um, I'll just write down the answer for you. Okay, uh, go ahead and make sure that you multiply by 12 cubed on the top here to change this from feet cubed to inches cubed. And we're going to go ahead and just plug in our values. E, our E is 29,000. Make sure you don't make any unit mistakes here. That gives us a delta B, a deflection at B, okay, of 4.022 inches down. Okay, very good. Cool, so that is our deflection at B. What about our slope? Well, our slope is exactly the same thing. We just need to go ahead and plug in exactly what we did using this formula now. So if we go ahead and move the one over EI to the outside, our limits are the same, right? We're starting from B, that's our origin, and we have 30 feet to A, only one span. And uh, this question, we're going to use our partial M by partial M bar. And our partial M by partial M bar was negative one. Let's go ahead and plug in our m expression again. They're both the same for both. And remember, we uh, we plugged in our fictitious values at this point and got negative x squared. Okay, that's going to be um, positive x squared integration from 0 to 30 times 1 over ei. And that is going to give you a value of 9,000. We're going to multiply by 12 cubed to get it to inches. And then we're going to divide by ei. And if we plug that in, we're going to get a value of 0 0.0149 rad. And don't forget the direction. The direction is clockwise. OK, cool. Very good, guys. So you know what? Pretty simple example. Um, I hope I taught you a couple things there about finding the deflection and the slope kind of at the same time in the M expression so that you can really kind of uh, not have to write this out twice. So you don't have to find two Ms or anything like that. Just, just write the M as one, plug it into both separate equations, and get your deflection, get your uh, get your slope. And it's as simple as that, guys. If you're enjoying the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It's much appreciated. Thank you guys for all the support. And uh, thanks for watching.